Hi, how you doing? In today's video, we're going to look at some of the myths that simply won't go away related to the pugilistic era. The first one I absolutely have to talk about, and this shouldn't come as a surprise to you, is the idea that boxing was not a skilled sport. That fighters simply stood in front of each other and punched each other with no attempt at defence until one of them fell down and couldn't get back up. I mean, really? Really? I realise that history's written by the winners, and that there's been a concerted effort over the centuries to attempt to portray a number of forms of unarmed combat as unskilled, brutish and uncivilised, but I genuinely struggle to understand how anyone with an ounce of sense actually believes this. We have references to boxing as far back as the Elizabethan period. We have records of fights dating back to the 1600s. We have instructional treatises on the art of boxing from as early as 1727. And we have a parallel evolution of weapons-based arts that dates back across Europe to the 1300s, showing a systematic approach to fighting. We have famous swordsmasters setting up shop with boxing coaches and sharing rooms to teach their respective arts together. And yet people still trot this crap out as if it's factual. Just stop it. Please, do a little research. This probably isn't doing my blood pressure any favours, so I'll try and keep it a little calmer for number two. The second myth that people tend to believe, and I'll be honest here, I've been guilty of this myself, is that James Figg was a boxer. We refer to him as the first ever boxing champion, so it's not really as heinous a crime as the idea that boxers weren't skilled, but the reality is that there isn't an awful lot of evidence to say he boxed. Fig was a stage gladiator, a prize fighter, back when playing a prize was still something people understood. He made his living performing demonstrations of his skill on stage, or by setting himself up at fairs as a champion for people to try their skill against. For a fee, of course. We have numerous pictures of him from the time, usually holding a sword or a quarterstaff, and Captain John Godfrey, in his wonderful book, A Treatise Upon the Useful Science of Defence, described training with Fig in the back sword and cudgel, and named him as the Atlas of the Sword. Later in the book, he goes on to describe boxing and the characters of all the famous boxers of the day. And Fig's name never cropped up. So Fig may well have boxed. I mean, it's likely that he did. But he was, without any shadow of a doubt, first and foremost a swordsman. And as yet, there doesn't appear to be, or at least I haven't yet found any, clear, compelling evidence that he was actually a successful boxer. The third myth is that Jack Broughton killed a man in the ring. This is a story that's been doing the rounds for well over a century, and I've been guilty of repeating it myself in the past. In February 1741, at George Taylor's gymnasium on the Tottenham Court Road, Jack Broughton, student of the great James Figg, and reigning champion of all England, beat a man to death in the ring. But it doesn't actually appear to have any basis in fact. The story is that Broughton fought a man by the name of Stevenson. Broughton was so strong and so skilled, and Stevenson so brave and game, that he literally took so much damage in the fight before finally giving in that he died soon afterwards from his injuries. In his grief, Broughton swore never to fight again, but after being persuaded to come out of retirement, did so only if a new set of rules written by himself were instigated. More on this in a moment. The problem with this story is that the record we have of the fight, thanks again to Captain Godfrey, say nothing of a death. What they actually describe is a fight where, after a long time, Broughton floored Stevenson with a single powerful blow. To make it even more unlikely that this stunning blow killed him, we have records of Stevenson fighting again some time later, which would have been quite an achievement for a dead man. Number four is kind of related in that we're sticking with Jack Broughton. This time, we're going to look at the formal rules he supposedly created for the very first time in his regret at killing Stevenson. With the origin story of the rules being shown to be untrue, we're faced with the question, why were these rules introduced at all? It's very clear when you read accounts from the time, and in the decades preceding them, that there was a very widely accepted convention of rules. Hitting a man when he was down was considered to be unsporting, and definitely not the done thing, which fits perfectly with the attitudes towards up and down fighting that we've spoken about recently. What we see in fights leading up to the creation of Broughton's rules, and indeed for some time afterwards, is that a fighter and his second can cry foul at any time when they think someone's infringed general sportsmanship. 
At that point, the umpire and other influential men of the fancy decide between them whether the action was fair. We saw this with Tom Johnson dropping to one knee against Isaac Perrins. We saw it when Jackson pinned Mendoza to the fence and held him by his hair. We saw it when Molyneux was accused of cheating to knock Cribbo. Whatever rules were in place, it was the job of the umpire to deal with unsporting behaviour. What we also see from time to time is specific rules being agreed for individual fights, something that feels unlikely to have happened if there was indeed a set of rules that everyone followed with universal acceptance. But Broughton's rules definitely existed, we know that for sure, but the wording of them is interesting. Broughton's rules as observed at his amphitheatre in Tottenham Court Road. So it seems that the truth of the matter is that he instigated a specific set of rules to be used at his own venue, house rules, if you like, and that these are the earliest set of formal written rules to have survived. What we have little to no proof of is that they were widely adopted across the whole boxing fraternity, though it's likely that they reflected what was being done. I tried really hard to find a fifth myth. That's quite tricky to say. Just because it's a nicer number, but nothing sprung to mind, so I'd like to take this moment to remind you of the seminar that we're hosting at Malin Martial Arts, where I train, at the end of October. Josh Barnett is in the UK and will be running a three-hour session for us on catch wrestling, and there are still a few spaces left. If you're a serious grappler, whether it's Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu or catch wrestling, then this is an opportunity to train with a man who's been at the very top of the grappling game for years. He's fought on the biggest promotions in the world and has won most of them. There are literally only a handful of people in the world with his level of experience and knowledge, and none of them are in the UK. If you're interested in catch wrestling, then you absolutely shouldn't miss this. Josh is by far the most successful catch wrestler in the world today. And he learned his craft with legends like Billy Robinson and Carl Gotch. He's trained with the very best of the Japanese catch wrestlers and coaches. And having personally been lucky enough to train with him in the past, I can promise you it will be an amazing session. Don't miss it. There's a link in the description. For the record, I'm not making any money from this. I just spend a lot of time telling people how amazing catch is and how they should get involved. And this is a really amazing opportunity to do exactly that. Anyway, back to the boxing myths. Did I miss any you were expecting to hear? Were any of them a surprise to you? Put something in the comments and let me know. And then subscribe. You know you want to. Interestingly, there's clear scientific proof that subscribing to my channel makes you a better fighter. It also, slightly more surprisingly, stops your socks going missing in the laundry. This may not be true. And to those of you still here at the very end of the video, fight team.